Now that we have our HTML markup done, let's learn how we can use CSS to make our web page just a little bit more accessible. Before we get started, let's take a look at our mockup again. Remember, we want a nice large header, some horizontal navigation, a product image on the left, a nice large clickable button, and a product comparison table at the bottom. So let's go ahead and switch over to our code. Now here I've created a file for our style sheet called style.css which lives in a folder called CSS. So let's go ahead and link that in now in our markup. So I'll just type link and it's a style sheet. And I'll just put in the path here. And there we go. Now we can switch over to our style sheet and go ahead and get started. Now first, we need to lay down some groundwork for our page. So first, I'm going to go ahead and put in a comment here called a flag, just so we can keep things straight. And I'm going to call this page styles. And first, I'm going to style the body element. Give it a margin of zero. Um, we're going to give it a white background with a repeating background image. And we want that to repeat along the x-axis. And we'll set the font family to Verdana and sans serif. And we'll decrease the font size just a little bit. Now we need to style the wrapper, so I'll go ahead and select that. We're going to give it a width of about 900 pixels, a margin of 0 and auto, so that it's centered on the page. And we're going to give it a little bit of padding so that our content doesn't run right up against the edge of the wrapper. And when we switch back to our browser and refresh, already our site is coming together. We have the repeating background, which is a gradient that you can kind of see here. And we also have a fixed width layout and all of our content is centered on the page. So now let's go ahead and style the paragraphs and links. So I'll just go ahead and skip down here a little bit and make some room to work. And first we'll style the paragraphs. We'll give them a line height of about 1.5 m's and we'll give them a slightly gray color. Now we need to style the hover state for our links. We'll give them a text decoration of none and we'll give them a slightly different color here. So now when we switch back see this is looking pretty good when we hover over our links there's a little bit of interactivity there but we can improve accessibility by using a pseudo class called focus oftentimes users with mobility impairments will use keyboard navigation and it can be very helpful to know what link the keyboard is currently focused on we can adjust the styling of a focused link like so so if i go up here and I just say anchor tag focus and we switch back and refresh and if I kind of tab through there you can see each link getting selected. Now Google Chrome adds some focus styling by default which is this prominent blue box that you see but if you look closely you can also see the text color change just like when we hover over the links. Not all browsers have this feature like Google Chrome does, so it's important to add focus styling whenever possible. Now let's drop in some styling for our header. So we'll switch back to our text editor and we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this flag here and we'll change it to say header. And I'm going to skip down again. And first we'll style this h1 and we'll give it a font size of about 3m's give it some 
top and bottom margin and we want it to be centered on the page. So when we switch back here and refresh, you can see that a nice large header like this will really help users with mild, low vision immediately identify what this page is about, even if they need the aid of a screen reader for the rest of the page. That way, if it's not what they're interested in, they don't need to listen to the whole page to figure out what it's about, and they can just move on. Now, let's take our vertical navigation here and make it horizontal. So I'll switch back again and copy this flag and we'll call this one navigation. And we want to select our nav div and we'll give it a list style of none to remove the bullet points. Uh, we don't want any padding, we'll give it some margin here and we're going to try and center this on the page. We'll give it a width of 400 pixels and an explicit height of about 20 pixels. Now we need to select the list elements. We want them to all float left. We'll give them a little bit of padding. We're going to put a border on the left side of these. It'll be one pixel solid and we'll use the RGBA function just so it blends into the page nicely. And we'll give it a font size of about 1.4 M's and we'll make them all bold as well. And finally we want to remove the border from the first element and I'll explain that in just a second. So when we switch back and refresh you can see that we now have some nice horizontal navigation. Again, by using unordered lists for navigation, we can make the navigation very screen reader friendly. At the same time, this allows us to choose if we want the navigation to be vertical or horizontal. Unrelated to accessibility, it's also worth noting that although we put borders on the left of all of our nav items, there's no border next to this first one here. That's because in the code, we used the first child pseudo class, which selects the first list item and applies different styling, which in this case removes the border. We have most of the CSS done for this project, but there's still more to go. In the next video, we'll finish things up.